Hi, good evening. Um, I am Sarah Chiu. I am on my program again called uh, Basket Starfish, our language core. And this week I'm going to talk a little bit uh, deeper about uh, women's writing. And I am going to talk specifically about uh, the patterns of tattoo. And here you are. Yeah, and good evening. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the tattoo, as I said. Uh, I hope I can finish that little idea, you know, within this half an hour's time. And I will try to go uh, at a, a slower pace, you know, because somebody told me that I'm going too fast. So hopefully you can um, get to understand, you know, what I'm trying to get to you. And first of all, let me... Um Let me get the slideshow going. Okay, thank you. Yeah, as I said uh, from last week, I said I talk about basket starfish and we are in sharing this common core. And again, I stress that grammar separates us like any other local habit. The key evidence is an uh, ancient common language is a no and non-stop communication is the use of similar sound to express similar mental concept in most languages. So um, I also want you to think, uh, to see that, you know, a lot of embedded mental concepts still talk very loudly beneath the surface of audible speech and visible writings and women continues to speak through those objects crafts cooking and customs and um, I, again I uh, last week I show you uh, this picture and I told you that you know uh, grass was a very important uh, symbol of uh, light living vigor and uh, you can see a grass as a horn an animal horn and uh, I mean plant horn and animal horn and the other one that just came out as a bull itself and from the very beginning uh, what I'm showing you now is a early pictograph before even the Sumerian Cuneiform. And you can see that the grass already incorporated with like something like a bull horn to show the growth power of a plant. So this animalism is very strong in a plant-based symbol. So uh, bear in mind that as time goes by, when I try to explain about the alphabet A, you will see a lot of this A in action. Um, okay. And uh, this I will show you uh, two different types of uh, tattoo that I see. Uh, a lot of them, you know, it seems to me that they are land people who stick with plants and animals. And the other type, you know, seem to uh, concentrate more on a fish-like symbol. As you can see, these are a few pictures that I took out from the Google and these are some uh, Moroccan uh, barber people and uh, they are nomadic. And but then this uh, symbol I show you here is actually Chinese symbol which ended up to become our Chinese writing for for writing itself so as you can see uh, it's very very similar and this is the one of the picture that I took in uh, Tunisia uh, the people also uh, carve on their leg and as time goes by you see that the head and the leg uh, and the foot you know actually plays a very very important symbolic uh, meaning in the earliest you know uh, writing system and uh, I'm not sure if these represent more of a sea going people but as you can see one type is a grass and the animal horn the other one is the uh, uh, fish type that actually uh, concentrate on this split end and I will explain to you as as the slide goes on and again um, the marks of the same tribe these are pictures I took in a Bedouin tribe uh, in the middle of the desert in Yemen as you can see uh, as I said last time uh, tattoo is not about individuality it's all about conform, uh, conforming to your own group accepting your responsibility as member of a whole tribe so it is uh, about you know a group 
mentality is nothing to do with who you want to be and um, I want you to show uh, I want to show this uh, Chinese writing also shows a very uh, symbolic horn right there this is like a grass on top of this female who's holding a, a thread right there and um, this is uh, actually this grass growing is a very important symbol of growth and symbol of life. And this is hero, uh, hieroglyph, Egyptian hieroglyph. This means old age, as you can see, um, as all these old women already uh, is and tattooing with all these forms. And this is Chinese symbol, symbol of grass and gradually turned into this kind of writing. And then this is actually life living and giving birth itself in Chinese writing writing and actually I uh, draw uh, what the tattoo is like you know, out you know in here this is actually the face of the women this is exactly what's being tattooed on their face this is their mouth right there and uh, I compare it with this uh, ancient Chinese writing as you can see uh, this symbol of growth is right there one is on uh, uh, on between the eyes you know on the forehead and the other one is right there and in Chinese um, it, of course it's very important that it carries that thread you know that which is the heritage thread and the writing continues to change and it become like this now and the sound is fun in Cantonese again I uh, concentrate mainly on the Cantonese sound which is a very very ancient Chinese dialect and I use uh, Mandarin occasionally to show you the mutation of sound and this fun actually means to propagate multiply plenty and numerous and also to breed uh, the multitude and um, I, I want you to concentrate on the sound now and this is Latin pharynx is actually fertile and the fertility and fecundus of course you understand is fecund and Azerbaijan this is uh, somewhere a country in the middle between Europe and Asia Fast it means abundance and also happiness and enjoyment and actually uh, if you speak Spanish feliz will be the word you are looking for okay and then uh, English will be fecund fertile fruitful affluent you see all this um, having the F sign this is actually Actually, the very basic core of this share word right there that points to the same understanding of the multitude of uh, fertility of women of female and and actually, uh, uh, since ancient time, women seem to use their face to express their wish. Uh, nothing is better than using their mouth to express the other whole. There are two holes, you know, in a female. One is our mouth, the other one is uh, down there in a vulva. And actually, uh, you can see that this plant right there, with the female mouth right there, coming with the beard coming down here, is actually pointing to the other end of the, the opening. And I want you to see that um, uh, why this symbol also is very, very uh, uh, ubiquitous in in uh, in Asia and also in Middle East. Actually, in ancient Southern Arabic writing, this sign actually is a F or P alphabet. The F and the P, you know, is they mutate between each other. And then uh, you can also look at this as the Chinese symbol like this. Uh, this is uh, we use it to express our mouth and sometimes is a container. The container sometimes actually pointed to the worm itself. And um, the sound itself, you know, I want you to concentrate on the G and the G and G and then hum. And I will show you about, you know, in your head you should be understanding these words as the pond, a pit, which is a deep hole, the fountain, the mouth, the spring, the worm. So in the ancient, all these words are actually jammed together in, in as a mental concept. And I'll show you one by one to see how uh, similar they are. This is the Chinese, as I said, is how, and sometimes it can be written like this in a triangular form, and actually this mouth actually Actually, it means an opening. The opening can be our mouth or it's actually our vulva. And right here, it means a fresh water pond right there. It's a hole, it's a pit, and actually carries the sound of gum. And Sumerian, uh, the vulva actually here, actually uh, pronounces gamme. 
uh, you can see how similar the sound is. And then you will see uh, the uh, another form like this. This actually carry the same meaning like this. This is a point, this is a point. But what kind of a point? Sometimes it's a real physical point. The other point is actually the worm itself which holds the baby. And then this is hieroglyph, this is uh, harm, pronounced as harm, and this is also harm, this is a well, this is a vulva. And as you can see the Chinese, in harm in Chinese actually means the pit itself. And so as you can see they all pointed to similar objects at the same time. And um, as you can see this one here, uh, it changed a little bit, it pronounces hey right here. And But you can see this vessel right there, hey actually carries the meaning of being pregnant. And uh, it means happiness and blessing. That's it too, and actually, um, they we share a similar Porsche, uh, Porsche affection of the writing right here. As you can see, this three point signs of uh, living vigor, and in uh, hieroglyph it sounds as hey, hey and hey. Can you see you when you are in ancient time? Uh, it seems that they can actually speak to each other with uh, with very similar sound, expressing very similar wishes, and. Um, I want to take you to the West, you know, this is a Celtic culture. Um, I will go into detail in another time, but I want to show you how uh, uh, the, all this shape about the fish and the hole. And uh, this is very direct right here. This is what they call Shila Nagik right there. You can actually see them in a lot of churches in the West. And uh, they are very boldly showing the vulva of, of female. And if you see it uh, clearly, this actually expressing the uh, the rune sign of the inheritance sign, and a lot of the things are actually not directly spoken of. You have to look at it and understand it in a very very subtle way. But as I said, I will uh, touch on it in another time. But as you can see, uh, as the fin of the fish right here, uh, the fun in Chinese actually means split and multiply, and the fin and the infinity. And when you bring out the fish, it always brings out the idea of infinity because the of the uh, the spawning of the fish, and then what it brings is a lot of babies right there. So um, I will go to another, uh, I will come back to a, this picture in another day. And I want you to look at mouth as the idea of a source. And I bring you back to that tattoo. And then I want you to concentrate on the mouth and those beer like things that coming out. You can say that they're root beer. Actually, when it happens on the chin, it's actually the beard itself. And I want to show you a Sumerian sign. This thing's falling down right there. It actually means human being. And also it means sound right there. And actually both of this thing coming out from an opening. And hieroglyph. And they have this sign to mean a human being. As you can see, you can actually understand it either from the sun and sun's ray coming down. Or a hole, a spring with water coming out. Whichever way you understand it is the human being coming out of a source. And okay, this is Chinese right there. As I uh, we have the same sign right there. It uh, you can also interpret it as sun as this flowing out. It actually also means multitude. And I will show you a number of writings that shows the brotherhood and also sons and beard. And this is the word. Beer. As you can see, something flowing down there. As time goes by, beer changed to something like this. I will show you something to, uh, which is very similar to this. But I want you to show you brother is uh, the same thing that split out from the same wound is brother. And it carries the H sound as well, hing, and it's exactly like the Arabic ahi, and this brother. Okay, and uh, the the suns suns right here is also uh, uh, two strokes coming down from this right source right there, um, uh, um, in Chinese it actually play uh, puns with this two li two symbol. It in pronunciation this is yi means sun and yi also means beard. But look at Greek, yios is sun, yeni it also means beard. As you can see, they are also carrying the same sound, playing the same pun. Sun and beer is also yu and yeni, okay, with the white sound. 
and uh, Chinese has another symbol as you again you see this a symbol which I will talk uh, in uh, later time and this means beginning as you can see this uh, beer flowing down or water flowing down as time goes by it becomes like this and this for us it means begin beginning um, as you can see these things flowing down right there it means beginning of growth the name of it uh, becomes the name of it the earliest emperor it means the head the, the chief and it also uh, with a little bit of change it also uh, carries out the meaning of longevity and is a, a auspicious sign and is also a sign of authority everything jammed together with these things flowing down from a source okay and um, now I will show you these two similarity I will show you the Maui uh, tattoo. Can you see the mouth, uh, the things that are coming down from the mouth? This is the uh, highly stylized beer coming out from the mouth. As I see the women, this is Inuit and uh, far away up north, you can see all these are very direct, you know, uh, beer symbol like it right up here and the roots coming out from the mouth as I see the tattoo even though they don't tattoo on their body as you can see the uh, ancient the body uh, especially in colder weather when the body is cover up you can't really uh, see the body so the main part will be tattooing the body so the mouth is a very expressive part to show how the beer comes down which is the your descendant so the mouth and the womb and the spring actually jump together as the same meaning this is a um, uh, you can consider them they share very in with the Inuit they actually share very very close you know uh, cultural uh, heritage uh, even though you know of course the, everyone uh, want themselves to be unique but the, these people lived in the northern part of Japan but you can see the exaggerated of a uh, mouth part and this is the Taiwanese and if you follow the ocean current these people actually flows all the way to up north of Japan and it flows through the Aleutian Island back to Alaska western part of America so this ancient route has always been on and on this culture has been going round in circle for centuries and centuries and you can see the exaggeration in the mouth and then this is East Island and as you can see uh, these are a very important part of this the, the carving in along the thigh if you read about the uh, tattoo uh, culture you will see ancient culture always tattoo along their thigh because they believe that when the baby comes out of the womb this is the first thing that they see in this world and the first blessing they give to the baby which you know uh, you can see in this Chinese symbol uh, of growth right there is the plant growth and this is hay as I said uh, is the symbol of pregnancy right there with the bow right there okay um, I want to to you I want to take you again thousands and thousands of miles away sorry I am jumping around the world because to show you you know how close we are uh, of course you can choose how different we are if you uh, pick to 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 see the difference but I'm trying to see you how similar we are and, and now we go to Africa we go to Mali to, to see this Dogon people which is the uh, least understood people as you can see uh, these are the masks they wear on their face and uh, those three points are actually uh, we will be jutting out about their head and you will see the symbol itself as the um, like the uh, growth symbol itself they share the same kind of sign and this is when they celebrate you know when they commemorate their their um, matrilineal sim, uh, ancestor that these are all female they are not male okay they are female as you can see and and I will show you a bunch of different writing. These are Chinese symbols showing growth sign and this is a uh, hieroglyph and hieroglyph and uh, Chinese again this is Chinese this is uh, ancient Hebrew this is also hieroglyph all pointing to the same uh, way of uh, we are asking for blessing beseeching blessing from above for for continuous growth and um, I bring you back to Boston this is a picture I took in the Opera House in Boston can you see this sign right there you know the growth sign 
and um, as I will bring out the uh, Egyptian car which is the growth the sole itself and you can also see the prawn the three prawn we use the human being use when we raise up our arms to back for something and that's the Hebrews uh, hey sign and this is the uh, infinity sign in ancient hieroglyph you can see that from east and west across thousands of miles and thousands of uh, uh, um, and years and, and we are still doing the same thing and you can see similar wishes and similar symbols and the beard of fecundity and as you can see you know um, the why we worship the gold so much and why the ancient uh, pharaoh have to wear that beer it was said that you know in real life when the pharaoh celebrate that when they wear that beer the beer was actually made of goat's uh, beard itself and and uh, again i show you all this with the flow that ancient do again and again to show the flow of life the coming down and we all used hair and beard to pun the sun descendant and the multitude and um, now I'm going to show you a little bit the gold versus the sheep the ancients actually know very well you know differences between the gold and sheep and uh, this is a picture I took when I was herding you know with the Bedouins you know in the deserts and these are the goats you know the goats are actually very clever animals you know you can send them away you don't have to follow them they will find their way back home you just throw a few of stone to drive them away they will eat you know they will come back in the evening on their own uh, very very different from sheep. You know, sheep, we, you really have to follow them because they are kind of, sorry about that, they're kind of stupid. They um, do not know the way they do not remember things. So you do have to take care of them. So there is always a reason why we always, you know, uh, take uh, metaphor as that we are uh, looking after the sheep as human beings because we like to follow. We don't go uh, around, you know, to do our individual things. Uh, we have to follow a lot of um, um, majority. So uh, why is gold so uh, important in ancient culture? Because of their uh, fecundity. Um, when I was herding the goats, you know, it was very funny. They always wear an apron, you know. Uh, this kind of apron is to stop them from mating all the uh, female unnecessarily. Uh, because, you know, if you let them mate, you know, they will multiply endlessly and that will also affect the milk supply of the, the gold so the, sometimes the Bedouin has to stop them and uh, when I get to some villages sometimes they will kill you know a goat or a sheep you know to have a feast with me and then um, uh, always I can tell you something very interesting that I learned uh, because in a human society now we always think that uh, in ancient time they sacrifice a male animal um, because male animals are respected but I can tell you it's actually totally the opposite every time they kill an animal is always a male now why because male animal actually are uh, because they are always disposable they are not as needed as female females are kept because they can multiply they can give birth to increase the herd and male you know they only need a couple of them to mate all the rest of the male will be killed you know at time for 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 meat for other purposes so uh in, in uh, as long as we uh, want to believe that male were very important but i want to tell you that in uh, herding society is really the opposite you just need one good male you know to mate that's all you need or the other but you will take good care of the female because they make you multiply and i want to uh to show you something very interesting um and this is something I looked at, you know, uh, for my own, you know, for fun. And uh, as you can see, uh, the pharaoh actually wear a beer like this with a device like that. And this is a Chinese opera. Uh, sometimes when we have uh, an, a person, especially a very uh, famous judge, you know, that uh, we believe his skin color is kind of black. And uh, this is uh, from generation we were told, you know. So um, whenever we see him, he'll 
be wearing a beard like that. And whoever wears a beard is always kind of a judge or kind of a respected, you know, uh, personality. So uh, I don't know how come this uh, legend goes on and on, even in Chinese. So there must be some kind of communication since very, very ancient time. Um, so uh, also I want you to show uh, there was um, actually in ancient time uh, beginning at the beginning uh, bulls uh, were very respected but there was a time uh, the ram or the ghost actually take over and these are the Chinese words you know with pun between the gold and also the word blessing and also the word beauty it all came from the word gold itself and um, as you can see, as time goes by, Alexander the Great actually always wear a ram horn, you know. He no longer wear a, a, a bull horn like the earliest, you know, gods. Uh, there is a very subtle change between the worship of a, a bull and the worship of a ram or a, a goat. And as you can see, you know, as time goes by, about 3,000 years ago, you will keep seeing that the uh, eyebrows of the people become begin to uh, uh, copy kind of like a gold you know from the ancient time all the, the, the to the Roman to uh, of course Frida Kahlo uh, right there you know she's actually very proud of her eyebrow her at certain time it was a sign of beauty and it's, it's actually a blessing and a protection and as you can see if you go to the Middle East they still have this habit the, the brides still uh, decorate their eyebrow still linked it up like that and I see a lot of things like that in Yemen when they decorate that for beauty or they use it you know to ward off evil or ward off duty to protect a sick child these are two sick child that the mother actually drew those ram on top of their head on their forehead or, or, or across their eyebrow so this is something that's interesting that they have carried on from ancient time and okay so i was going to tell you uh, a little bit about the writing of Ao, but i guess time is running out i'll tell you next time so uh thank you for watching and i will talk to you again next week okay um i will continue with this Ao writing and sorry that i have to go very fast goodbye thank you so much